Guys, welcome back to the Offcut Garage here in sunny, hot Australia. Once again, I'm turning on the lights inside the garage for 80,000 people who are watching. This is absolutely crazy and mind-blowing. I cannot believe that. Was it not yesterday when I put the 75 on? It is crazy. I cannot even believe that, that so many people are watching when I'm doing videos in my garage. Yeah, boom, 80,000. So, and here, right at the beginning, thank you so much for all your wonderful and beautiful comments under my last couple of videos. There's a lot of encouragement in your comments. Thank you so much for that. You obviously love watching these videos and I love making them. So, let's keep going. As you have seen, we have wonderful blue sky outside. We've got um, 11.30 in the morning, battery is on 77% and we have 134 amps outside. Bit of load here, but I guess the battery will be full in the next two hours. And this is actually exactly what we need today. We need to fully charge the battery shelf because I want to show you something. <laughs> I know it is, it is about the um, JK BMS, not the inverter JK BMS. It is about the old style BMS, the first generation BMS I have here in the middle shelf, but also about the new JK BMS non-inverter style. This is the BD series of JK BMSs I have installed here. Well, and since I have installed the Peter boards on all these BMSs, I am kind of reliant of what state of charge these BMSs show, because the Peter Master in the bottom shelf here is aggregating all the data from all these BMSs and then send this combined back to our Raspberry Pi inside the top compartment. And this is exactly what we see here in the Victron remote console. And this is also exactly what you see on the Victron VIM, which I will link down below. You've got a 24 seven view on my system here, a live view. You can see exactly what's going on. And of course, when we hit the 55.2 volts, this is how far I charge my batteries. We want to have the system showing 100%. This is how I would define the battery is fully charged. So while this is easy to achieve with the, um, where is it here? With the JBD BMS in the top compartment shelf, because there you have a setting called 100%, now what is it called? Full charge voltage or something. So I set this one to 3.45 volts. Whenever we hit this voltage, it actually shows 100%. So the JBD BMS does a fantastic job in resetting to 100% state of charge. The BMS, the JK BMS in the middle shelf, as I said, this is the first one, first generation. You need to have this five volt jump start on the P negative, whatever, to start it up. There's no power button for it, nothing. So it's really the first generation of BMSs and there is no setting for resetting to 100%. So the BMS only waits until you hit an over voltage protection. Yeah, 3.65 volts per cell, for example. If one of the cells hits that, it resets to 100% and also sets the capacity to 280 ampere hours. Well, this is not desirable because you don't want to go into a protection mode, which disconnects your battery from your charger just to reset to 100%. And we are never charging to 3.65 volts anyway. So how do you get the version 1 BMS to reset to 100%? This is a question I had for a long time. And I've asked JK a few times, is there any other trigger mechanism in this BMS to actually show us 100% without hitting over voltage protection? And they never, they never answered this question. Never, never. Not in our technical group with all the engineers. Not when I contacted individual persons, they, they never got back to me with that. So obviously there is no other trigger mechanism for the 100% state of charge. Well, then in the bottom shelf, there is the newer version. This is one of the newest version they are selling, the BD series. It's a 100 amp BMS with a 0 0.6 amp active balancer. Wonderful device, beautiful device. This also comes already with the SOAK 100% voltage setting. So you can actually set an individual voltage where the BMS resets to 100%, which is independent from your over voltage protection. So great, uh, if it works. There's also confusion out there because there's no documentation. How do you have to set this up? So here, let's get right into a battery number three. That's the bottom one, settings. Okay, there you can see it. State of charge, 100% voltage, 3.45 volts. Do you think this BMS has ever 
reset to 100% when I hit this voltage? No, never, never. And also, again, I took screenshots, I took videos, I sent this all to JK and said, well, this VMS is not working as designed. And they got back to me and said, ah, Andy, you have programmed your parameters wrong. They need to be in a certain order. So cell over voltage protection up here needs to be higher than your state of charge 100% voltage. Needs to be higher than cell over voltage protection recovery. I said, well, this is exactly what I did, right? Well, not right now, because I showed them it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter, regardless if you have them in a certain order. If I change this one to, oh, verify password, 0 0.440, for example, yeah? So now it would be in the order, over voltage protection, state of charge, reset, cell, over voltage protection, recovery. Yeah, they are in a certain order now. But it doesn't matter. It still does not reset at 3.45 volts. The inverter BMS, the PB series of their BMSs, does it beautifully. As soon as one of the cells hits this voltage, it resets everything to 100%. It assumes the battery is full. It shows you this in the app, on the display, everywhere. Works beautifully. But in these BMSs, it doesn't. And I tried many, 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 many times. And I contacted them about four weeks ago and said, well, this is happening. This is your, this is the BMS I have. This is the software it runs. This is my app software. I set the parameters correctly as per your instructions. And it still doesn't reset. It just doesn't work. It doesn't matter if one cell hits this voltage or all of the cells hit this voltage. It doesn't matter. It does not reset to 100%. And again, the, the software, if I change this parameter back to 3.6 volts, which I would personally prefer, it doesn't complain about having them not in the right order, you know? Like the, like the inverter BMS, it won't allow you to put this in the wrong order. Not so with this one. I've got an over voltage protection of 3.65 and a recovery of 3.6. That's how I would set the BMS. And this would be totally independent from a state of charge 100% voltage. So regardless in which order you program your settings in this BMS, it doesn't matter. It does not reset to 100%. Never ever. So, and here comes the trick now. And this is again coming from one of you guys. It is a while back that someone left a comment under one of the videos. Well, you have to read all the comments under the videos. There are gold. People putting so much information and there are so many good tips. And today I want to show you how to set your BMS. Regardless if you have the very first generation as I have or the brand new one, which um, doesn't reset to 100% for whatever reason, how to reset them to 100% when the battery is full. When you say the battery is full at 3.45 volts, at 3.5, at 3.55 volts, whatever you set, the BMS will reset to 100%. And it works. <coughs> so to demonstrate how it works, I need to, um, need to disturb the BMS again and make it think we are not at 91%. So how do we destroy that setting? We just change the battery capacity to say 100 ampere hours. Click on OK. We go to status and it shows now 75. Yeah. So if we go back and change it to 280 again, click on OK. There you go. It sits on 75%. Now you can see it here in Home Assistant as well. It has changed now from 90% down to 75. So, and to calibrate the BMS to 100% at your desired voltage. You want to change your over voltage protection to 3.451 volts. Yeah. All right, now it's complaining because this one is too low. 0 0.440, it doesn't really matter. I have now changed my cell over voltage protection to 3.451 volts. So one millivolt, one millivolt higher than my desired, my maximum charge voltage for this battery. And you can see in Home Assistant, the state of charge has already jumped to 95% now. It thinks we are at 95%, but most likely we are at around 90%, like all the other batteries. So when we hit the 3.451 volts now, obviously the BMS goes into an over voltage protection and turns off the charger altogether for all three battery banks, yeah, because they are communicating with each other now. But also when we hit the over voltage protection, it obviously resets to 100% state of charge. It will show 280 ampere hours and 100% state of charge. And this is your desired outcome. 
obviously you don't want to run into the over voltage protection every single day, right? As I said before, this is not a desired outcome. Absolutely not. So let's give it another couple of minutes until we hit the 3.451 volts and this BMS actually goes into OVP. And then I show you what to do next. Super easy. So, okay, I think we are close to hit uh, 3.451 volts. I had actually to limit my charging speed here because it was powering with over 11 kilowatt into this battery. At the moment we have a charge limit of 100 amps and I give it another 100 amps. So you will see charging current is ramping up now for all the batteries and come on, we give it another 50 from this battery here as well. Setting the CCL, the charge current limit to 250 amps. And I think this is still limiting the charge current into this battery. So much solar I have right now. Okay, maximum cell voltage, 3.435. So we are close to a 3.451, jeez. Even the battery is pretty full. You can see it takes only 13 amps, but you can also see the 97% set of charge has not moved since. But it might be fairly accurate now. The cell with the blue color is the highest cell in the whole pack. And we need to hit these uh, 3.451 volts. So yep, charging with 7.5 kilowatt into the battery. And here we can see we are reaching 3.453 volts. It reset to 100% for a short moment. And now it has disconnected the charger, obviously, for this BMS. And immediately the voltage goes down until we hit the recovery voltage of 3.44 volts and then the charger kicks back in. So we can watch it actually again now. So, and here we go, 3.443 voltage is rising and you can see now the BMS is already at 100%. Even we have not quite hit this 3.451 volts now. Bam, we just hit it again. Over voltage protection, you can see it in the app here, battery is fully charged. Everything resets to 100%. Battery gets then discharged a bit, which causes the charger to kick back in because I have set the recovery very close to the actual protection. So, and what we can do now, we go back into the settings and change the over voltage protection again back to 3.65 and the recovery 0.6. So, there you go. This is pretty much all you need to do. And now the battery will not disconnect anymore. It will just keep charging until we hit 3.45 volts. And here you can see it already shows 100% now. Here again, 3.456, state of charge, 100%. Because even you set 3.45 volts as your maximum charge voltage for your inverter, one of the cells, at least one of the cells, will always go over this limit just by one millivolt, always. They are never, never, ever 100% balanced at this voltage. So you can actually play with this setting a bit and set this to 3.46 volts. So it gives you a bit of buffer and you really want to make sure that one of the cells hits this 3.46 volts and then it resets to 100%. So this is obviously a bit of a workaround, a bit of a trick. It is not a real solution because this BMS has the 100% state of charge setting, which just doesn't work. So someone came up with this trick here to set your over voltage protection once a little bit over your maximum charge voltage. So one of your cells will hit that, trigger the over voltage protection, and then you increase the protection voltage again to what it was before. And here, as you can see, the JBD BMS has now reset to 100% as well because there is a setting which actually works, 3.46 volts. And the middle shelf battery, middle shelf battery is always a bit tricky, but it is on 99% now and we have already hit the 3.45 volts, but it has not reset to 100%, but eventually it will once the other cells are coming higher in voltage. And I couldn't really figure out why this is it is reacting differently to the newer model of the JK BMS. So even I have applied the same method to the middle shelf battery, the generation one of the JK BMS, it does not quite reset to 100% at 3.451 volts. But this one will eventually reset to 100% as well, you will see. And here again, interesting, here at 55.2 volts, we've got 31 millivolt deviation in the JBD BMS, all fine. 
We've got 50 millivolt deviation in the middle shelf JK BMS. Quite high, right? And we've got only 6 millivolt deviation in the bottom shelf with a new JK BMS. And people have asked me this question as well. Is the 0.6 amp active balancer actually enough for a 280 amp hour or even a larger? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is my best balanced battery in the whole battery shelf now. Since I have installed this BMS here, I have never had any issues. There's never a larger delta than 20 millivolt in this battery. Never ever. Even if I charge to 57 volts or something, the JBD BMS will disconnect already because one of the cells is peaking. We have like 100 millivolt deviation in the middle shelf battery and I have only 15 or 16 millivolt deviation in the bottom shelf. Best balanced battery ever. So we still have to wait for the JK BMS here in the middle shelf to catch up. Bottom shelf fully absorbed at 55.2 volts. The top shelf battery with the JBD BMS has almost fully absorbed, but the middle shelf as always is a bit behind. But now it has just reset to 100% here as well. 55.2 volts, that is totally fine. So. 100%, 100%, 100%. And if I have a look in my overview now, it shows me my battery is 100% charged. This is what I define as 100%. You may have other points. You may charge to a 3.5 or 3.55 volts, but you can do the same method to reset your JK BMS to 100% as well. It should work. And you do this only once. I've got this running for like probably two, two and a half months now. And it just works. With both JK BMSs, they all reset to 100% now just fine. Even this damn stupid f setting is not working in the JK BMS, as it should. But I'll keep nagging JK for this, because this BMS has got the new firmware and it should reset to 100% when we reach the parameter we have set in the settings. One of you left a comment recently and said, well, he bought several of these BMSs and only half of them reset to 100% when the voltage is reached. The other half doesn't. I don't know if they have all the same software, but um, I mean, how hard can it be, right? Obviously, this is another untested software release by JK BMS. <sighs> Guys, that's how you do it. How you can reset your JK BMSs to 100% state of charge. One of you left a comment under one of my videos. Brilliant tip. Works a treat. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support. Making 80,000 subscribers possible. Mind blown. And until the next video, guys, when we do something, something else. You are giving me new content for the next 30 years. So I'll keep making these videos until we run out. Guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Uh, the charge balancer is only in the JBD, but as you can see, delta is actually increasing now. So this balancer is not really coping with the 304 amp hour batteries. Near the 2 amp active balancer will eventually balance out this pack, but it has to do it every single time. While here the 0.6 amp active balancer is totally fine. There's nothing to do. 2 millivolt deviation. So I need to, um, need to do something with this battery here. Replace the aluminium bus bars. I know, it's on my list.